Welcome to the Movie News uh, 22 Tiger Dude, where I cover, well, movie news. I haven't done a movie news video since a year ago, guys. Seriously, I think the last time I did a movie news video was when Spider-Man was announced to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not alone here. I have a couple of guests with me to cover some of the movie news we're going to be talking about. First one is... Mr. WWE Fan 0599. Hey, what's up, you guys? WWE Fan 0599. Uh, Uncharted 4. It's so incredible. I want to cry because of how incredible it is. And um, I'm Adam Haskell's fucking Blu rays. I fuck Blu rays for a living. Uh, all right, that's pleasant. Okay, you guys, so we have quite a bit of movie news to cover, so I look forward to doing this. All right, so the first movie news we're going to cover is that Godzilla 2 is getting a, has gone a different release date, and Godzilla vs. King Kong now has an official re release date. So what I'm, what I'm reading this from, comicbook.com, and it says, Godzilla 2 is moving from June 8th, 2018 to March 29th, 2019. So the wait is a little bit longer. For the love of God, come on! I know, I know. Warner Brothers announced Tuesday Godzilla 2 had been holding the same date as Transformers 6 from Paramount, one of the films that is coming out of Paramount Star studded Transformers writer's room, Godzilla vs. Kong got its first release date, which will be officially May 29th, 2020. Saying it only a hair over a year past Godzilla 2 seems to be a show of faith in both films and the franchise building. Also, it does say something about Green Lantern Corpse to go from June 19, 2020 to July 24, 2020. So, okay, it's moving like about a month. All right, so, yeah. Well, Godzilla 2 for me, um, it's a shame to hear that it's going from 2018 to 2019, but maybe it'll give them time to come up, like give them time to think of a very fresh script. That's how I see it. While it is a bummer, we have to wait until 2019 now. You know, at least they'll give them time, so I'm not too bummed about it. Godzilla vs. King Kong gained its official release date being May 29, 2020. I am very hyped for it. We're literally four years away from it. I look forward to both movies, honestly. Even if Godzilla 2, the way is a little bit longer, um, I just hope that they take their time with the script and make sure that they get it right. Like with uh, Godzilla from 2014, in my opinion. Uh, what are your thoughts on this WWE fan? We were supposed to get Godzilla 2 this year. Remember that? We were supposed to actually get this year. Yep, I remember. And that was pushed back to 2018, which I was like, okay, they probably want something to, you know, figure something out, figure a new story. Now, pushing it back now a year later, it's going to... I hope this isn't a sequel too late, because it's like, it's not going to be five years since that movie. So I just hope it's not like one of those sequels where they wait forever on. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Because, I'm sorry, I mean, you don't have to make a sequel literally the next year, but you got to cash in on that almost immediately. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very bummed because we all know I love that Godzilla movie from 2014. Yeah. And it's... And it sucks to hear that it's getting pushed back to 2019. But uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla, that is going to be one packful um, summer if that is going to be one of the summer movies. Because everybody's talking about, you know, Batman v Superman, you know, Captain America vs. Iron Man. This is the battle of the behemoths right here, okay? <laughs> this, this is a battle. Like... If you thought cities were going to get destroyed in, like, those movies, forget the whole world's getting destroyed if these two are fighting. Oh, yeah. So, so I can't wait. I have seen the original Godzilla vs. King Kong, the actual original film. Yeah. It's not good, so I'm glad that they're doing a sort of a remake of that, and they're doing it with, a mod with the modern Godzilla, and... 
Um, I know they're not going to use the Peter Jackson King Kong, but they're going to use the one from Skull Island. So I'm very interested to see how they will do King Kong versus Godzilla. Adam, your feelings on Godzilla 2 game delayed and the release date of Godzilla vs. King Kong. What the fuck? Why is it getting delayed? God damn. <sighs> fuck you. Anyways. Um, now I was... Now I, now I uh, am super... Now I was super pissed to hear that because just a thing we were going to get... When were we going to originally get Godzilla 2 again? Uh, 2016, then 2018, June 8th. 2018. Now it's March 22nd, 2019. We would have gotten it this year! Like, come on now! Whatever, I guess. Uh, like Tony said, maybe they should just take their time on it, but still, I'm pissed. I really want to see this sequel, because, you know, the first one is very awesome. I think it's definitely underrated. Um, not a lot of people really brought it up, honestly. Like, at first, yeah, but, like, as time went on, it seems like people don't really ring it up as much anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for the sequel, but just I hate waiting so long for movies. But hopefully it goes by fast. It usually usually does. As for the Godzilla versus King Kong, I'm really excited for that. That sounds badass. Um, I haven't seen the original Godzilla versus King Kong. I actually haven't seen any of the original Godzilla movies in the past. Believe it or not. In fact, the only Godzilla movie I've ever seen was the 2014 one. Not lying. Oh, okay. Uh, but but it, I thought that one was awesome. So uh, yeah, but the Godzilla vs. King Kong, that sounds uh, that sounds really badass, and I really love the King Kong movie. So those are our thoughts on that. Now the next news headline is that Jack Black has been confirmed to be in the Jumanji remake with The Rock. The Rock confirmed it on his Instagram that Jack Black is going to be a part of it with him and Kevin Hart. Now, as for Jumanji remake, first of all, because uh, I know I haven't really told you guys my thoughts on it, I was just all like, are you kidding me at first? But as the days are going by, it's not something I'm going to really complain about anymore, to be honest. But I can see why a lot of people aren't happy about it, however. But I just accept that that's being made. So, And I'm happy because I do love The Rock. You know, I love The Rock. I really enjoy Kevin Hart. I love Jack Black. And Jack Black, I can see being in a Jumanji reboot because he, he has been in a lot of adventure films. Like, look, he was in Goosebumps recently. King Kong was one of them. The guy definitely fits being that adventure kind of guy. And if anyone wants to be in a Jumanji reboot, I think Jack Black is honestly a great fit for it. Like I said, the reboot's being remade. Okay, I accept it. But honestly, as far as Jack Black goes, I'm actually really happy with this casting news. Um, how do you feel about the casting news, WWE fan? It's not the casting. Jack Black I love. It's the fact that they're doing this remake. Right. Now... I'm not hating the fact because it's a remake of a movie that I love. It's the fact that it's too soon. Yeah. It's too Robin soon, Williams. people. It's too soon. If this were 2012 or 13, that would have been like, okay, fine, whatever. But it's too soon, people. Once they announced this last year, I was like, wow. Way to, like, cash cow on, like, a person's death. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe I might be looking too deep into it, but I'm sorry. No, no you're not. You're not. It's just, like, really, you guys? It's too soon. So I I'm not happy at all about this remake. Who knows? It could be good. It probably will. The Rock and Jack Black, they're entertaining guys. I love them. They're great actors. But I don't know. Just I'm not sold on this remake. They'll have to do something really, really good, you know, in order for me to really fully buy into it. Yeah. But Jack Black, you can see fitting in the room. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you, Adam, with Jack Black being in Jumanji? I think that's awesome um, casting, honestly, because th this will actually be, wouldn't this be the first time Jack Black and The Rock are in a movie together? Oh, yeah. Like, that, that just sounds awesome right there. 
But just like um, WWE fans had, I do feel like it's just, it definitely is too soon, but I also feel like it's just not necessary for them to remake this movie, honestly, at all. Definitely not necessary. Oh, it yeah. could be a good movie, though. It could be a fun time. I just feel like Jumanji's not something that needs to be remade at all. Uh, oh, yeah. But whatever. Um, I love the casting. I think the casting's great, I think. I think Dwayne Johnson and Jack Black, they're going to have, like, I don't know if they're going to have, like, any like, scenes together, but they most likely will. Um, yeah. If they have, like, a lot of scenes together, I think they'd make a great team. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this is definitely not necessary. It is way too soon, but, you know, I think this will be their first movie together, too, so I'm excited about that. Now, the next one we're going to be covering up is, well, ladies and gentlemen, we finally have our Han Solo, as it has been announced that Alden, I'm really sorry if I mispronounced his last name, Ehren Reich, he's been announced to be Han Solo in the Han Solo spinoff movie that... Is coming out in, I believe, 2018, if I'm not mistaken. He's from Hell Caesar, uh, for those that don't know, so he will be our new Han Solo for the standalone film. And my thoughts personally, well, first of all, my opinion, uh, I don't think we need a Han Solo spinoff movie. If anything, I really want that Obi-Wan Kenobi spinoff movie. That's the one I really want to see happen, to be perfectly honest with you guys. But... I don't know. I don't see Alden really... He doesn't really have the face of Han Solo, in my opinion. He just doesn't have that look. Who knows? Maybe they'll put on makeup on him for the standalone or something, but as far as like looking like young Han Solo, I just don't, I just don't buy into it, to be honest. Yeah, uh, Alden, I'm not too sure about his Han Solo. What about you, WWE fan? Man, do they just? Do you want me to be upset this entire video or something? Like, <laughs> man, just why? Like, like, why do we need a solo, like Han Solo, you know, a young Han Solo film? Yeah. We don't need it. The only person to play Han Solo is Harrison Ford, and that's who should be the only person to ever play Han Solo. So it's stupid. And if they would have gotten anybody to play young Han Solo, it should have been. Uh, Taron Edgerton. That that's his name, right? Yeah, like you, he yeah. You you pretty much got correct. And some of the other guys that they considered, like Miles Miles Teller, Dave Franco, Elson Elgort. What the? I don't see him as Han Solo. Like I saw him, I'm like, this is not Han Solo. This really isn't. So I I sell the fact that they're doing this. Harris Ford is the only fucking Han Solo, okay? All right? No one else can play Han Solo. I'm sorry. Harrison Ford is fucking Han Solo. I just feel like uh, the spinoff... Why Why is this happening? I mean, like, why are you making a spinoff? It's just going to be depressing to watch, too, because... So it's like... It's just going to be hard to watch... Something like this too, honestly. Yeah. And plus, uh, like this guy looks nothing like Han Solo. <laughs> okay, nothing. There's nothing like Han Solo at all. I just I don't see the point of this, and I don't. I just don't get it. I, this shouldn't happen. Or like Tony said, yeah. just give us that Obi Wan Kenobi or you know, Obi Wan Kenobi or yeah. Boba Fett. Like, why do Han Solo? Something. Just not a fucking Han Solo. They like, should come on do. Now. Okay, the three movies they should not do are Han Solo, A Princess Leia, or a Luke Skywalker film. Because you can't replace those three. You really can't. So what the next one is something that Adam suggested that we talk about, and that is the possibility that Rocket Raccoon may, the key word is may, folks, join Avengers Infinity War. You know, it just says that Civil War's Dal 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 thing, thanks to success of Witch Soldier, has been like in the studio, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Ryan's Chris Lee, safe to assume that the current roster of Avengers that we know is right now will be ready for battle against the villainous Thanos. So, yeah, basically, you guys get the point. Um, Rocky Raccoon may be part of it, and if he does, please, please, please make it happen. 
Make it happen. I love Rocket Raccoon. He's honestly my favorite character in Guardians of the Galaxy. I heard I heard um, somewhere that Star-Lord may be joining as well. I'm not too sure I heard, but if that's the case, I would love to see Rocket Raccoon be part of it. I mean, it would make sense to see a talking raccoon join along with Iron Man and Captain America to fight off a Thanos. If it does happen, I'm going to be the happiest person alive. So just remember, you guys, keyword is may, but... How do you feel about this, um, WWE fan, if it happens? Uh, sweet, okay? Because, like you said, I love Rack of Raccoon, even though my favorite from uh, that film was Star-Lord, which uh, I also hearing that he's going to be a, maybe a part of it. At this, point, they should, <laughs> at this point, they should just confirm that the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to be in Infinity War, because it's going to happen. I would prefer that all of them actually come to Infinity War. Like... Let's just let's just have let's just have the Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's have Daredevil. Let's have them all come in. Okay. Let's have. The, I'm sorry. The Guardians of the Galaxy and Daredevil. They should be in this. They really should be. You know. They don't have to include any of the other Netflix characters. Just Daredevil. Just Daredevil. Come on. They, they can do it. I mean, seriously. He's not like Jessica Jones or Luke Cage or Iron Fist. He's he's one of Marvel's biggest characters. So come on now, Marvel. They get. They should get Howard the Duck in there. Yeah, get Howard the Duck in there. Just have have him use a right right blaster, <laughs> <laughs> or use Leah Thompson, or just as a machine gun. <laughs> exactly. It's all like. <laughs> oh, I don't know where we went with that, but yeah, Rocket Raccoon. The fact that he might be in a uh, Avengers: Infinity War excites me, so I'm excited for that. Well, Rocket Raccoon is either my. Second favorite character, my first favorite character. I'm so tied with Rocket Raccoon and Groot, and Guardians of the Galaxy. But um, Rocket Raccoon, I love that character. He's great. He's a great, all around great character, and I just love to see him join Avengers: Infinity War. But like they said, I think they should just get the entire, Gar- the whole Guardians of the Galaxy crew in there. I mean, why not? You know? Yeah. I think it'd be great if they were all in there, not just Rocket Raccoon. But Rocket Raccoon. He's a great character. I, I like I said, I just love to see him in that movie. Yeah, that's all I really have to say. There's not really too too much to say about this one, but I just think like, yeah, definitely I, I really hope he joins that movie and the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy do too. Now the next one we're gonna be talking about is Ridley Scott, director Ridley Scott and writer Drew Goddard to work on another film together. According to the article, which I'm reading from Deadline.com, it says 20th Century Fox has closed a big deal for screen rights to the S. Craig Zoller novel, Wraiths of the Broken Land, so it could reunite the dream team behind the Best Picture Oscar-nominated hit, The Martian. Ridley Scott has made a deal to direct with Drew Goddard to write the script. The film will be produced by both of them, along with Scott Fries, Michael Schaefer, genre film Simon Kinberg, and Adita Sood. The similarities to the comparatively upbeat The Martian and their Wraiths of the Broken Land is a western set near the Mexican border at the turn of the previous century. A group of men assemble and storm across the Badlands to find their captive sisters, doing anything they deem necessary to achieve their goals. Lives, ethics, and sanity are imperiled during the wild, brutal struggle that ensues and nobody is safe. The book was published by Raw Dog Screaming Press. Scott was eager to work again with Goddard. The Martian grossed just north of $650 million worldwide. So I think that's really cool, honestly. You know, The Martian, I thought, was an incredible film. It's one of my favorite movies of 2015. You know, what and how Andrew Goddard wrote the script, how he was able to adapt The Martian from the book. Um, was honestly really incredible. I've never read the book, but I've heard incredible things about it. So how Andrew Goddard wrote the script and how Ridley Scott was able to bring the Martian to life, like just bring NASA to life, bring Mars to life, honestly, it was truly incredible. I love the Martian. I love what both of them did. So, you know, with how successful the Martian did, hell yeah, I want to see Drew Goddard and... 
uh, Ridley Scott do another film together with Drew Goddard writing the script for this movie, and of course Ridley Scott returned to direct, I could totally see them reteaming to do another movie. So definitely I buy Ridley Scott and Drew Goddard reteaming to do another movie. And it's a Western thriller. I love Westerns, so Ridley Scott, Drew Goddard, bring me a Western. So, uh, W, how do you feel about director Ridley Scott and writer Drew Goddard, who worked on The Martian together, to reteam to work on Race of the Broken Land, a Western thriller film? Sweet as cheese, Swiss cheese, okay? That is awesome. Okay, I can't wait for them to work together again because I loved um, The Martian. And I love Ridley Scott, and I love Drew Garter, so I can't wait to see what they do with another film. If they do so, do it again. So, yeah, thumbs up for that. Sweet. And you, Adam. I love The Martian, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do with this movie. I don't really know a whole ton about this movie. Um, well, you just kind of said what it's about, but I'm still, I still have to wait till a trailer to really warm <laughs> my overall opinion on how I think it's going to look. The next one is a movie news that was suggested by WWE fan to talk about, actually. And that is the fact that Ubisoft confirms Tom Hardy is still in the Splinter Cell movie. Um, according to what Games Raider says, I'm reading it from that site, Tom Hardy's star has risen quite a bit since he was attached to the Splinter Cell film adaptation way back in 2012, but he's definitely still on board. The former CEO of Ubisoft Motion Pictures wouldn't have any other better way. Jean-Juliet Baronet sent an interview conducted in December that many of the same traits make Hardy and Assassin's Creed star Michael Fassbender ideal for their uh, respective projects. So, Splinter Cell, um, WWE fan, I know you have more knowledge on this, but it's based off of a video game, so it's one of those movies that's adapted from a video game, and I can't really say too much about this one, because I'm not familiar with Splinter Cell, like, I've heard about it, but I haven't seen, like, any images or, you know, any footage on the game, but it's Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy's a great actor, and you know what? If he's still attached to do this movie, then you know what? Let him do it. I look forward to seeing whatever the guy brings to the table for this movie. Uh, yeah, Splinter Cell is one of my personal favorite video game franchises of all time. It's it's mostly a lot of stealth in the video game. He's more uh, Sam Fisher, who's the main character of the game. That's who Tom Hardy is playing. He is a very stealthy guy. He's like a special ops type guy. And he's great. He's so, he's one of my favorite video game characters of all time. So the fact that this is being turned to a movie, this movie has been in development like forever. Since like 2005, this movie has been in development. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, so the fact that Tom Hardy is going to be playing Sam Fisher, I couldn't imagine. Because while I was playing Splinter Cell Blacklist... I was like, if they get anybody to play, um, you know, uh, Sam Fisher in a film, they should get Tom Hardy. And well, you know what happens? Tom Hardy's playing uh, Sam Fisher in a Splinter Cell movie. So, I can't wait. Tom Hardy's one of my favorite actors working today, and one of my favorite actors of all time, and just in general, because of what this man brings to the table. So, I'm excited to see what he does with as Sam Fisher in the Splinter Cell movie. I'm so glad he's still on board with it. Um, honestly, I haven't even. <laughs> honestly, I've never even heard of the game Splinter Cell until just tonight. So I can't say a single thing about it. Like, not only have I never played it, I haven't ever heard of it until tonight. Definitely right, play uh, the HD remastered versions are on a uh, PlayStation Three if you ever want to play them. Nice. Oh yeah, I have a PS Three, so I could definitely get that game. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Now we get to the final bit of news, also suggested by WWE fan. Um, although I'm I'm not sure if it's considered a spoiler or not, but um, just be cautious when we talk about this next one. So this is a very cautious spoiler alert. Watch this next portion, 
at your own risk, is all I'm going to say, because I'm not sure if it's considered a spoiler or not, to be honest. Um, but I know the guys want to talk about it, so I want to go with it. And that is the fact that Tom Hardy is to possibly make a cameo. Well, it says he's reportedly set to make a cameo in Star Wars Episode Eight. So the article tells you how it goes, but I'm not going to really spoil that. Um, that's just all it says. And if he does make a cameo in Star Wars Episode Eight, I mean, that cameo with Daniel Craig and The Force Awakens was just fantastic. I love that cameo. Um, so, yeah, Tom Hardy, if the cam... Well, it seems to be true, so if the cameo is true, then yeah, um, Tom Hardy making a cameo, I buy into it, honestly, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> like I said before, Tom Hardy's an awesome actor, so uh, that'd be cool if you made a cameo in Star Wars Episode Eight because, you know, uh, like I said, I love Tom Hardy, and I love Star Wars, so Mad Max being the Star Wars universe... <laughs> Double confirmed, cinematic universe, Mad Max versus Star Wars, confirmed, no, I'm kidding about that last part, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, but Tom Hardy being in, um, possibly having a cameo in Star Wars, that'd be awesome. Um, fuck yeah, I'd love this team have a cameo in that movie, I'm really excited for it. Tom Hardy, you know, yeah. All right, you guys, that's about all the movie news. I mean, as far as the movie news, I either want to cover or the guys want to cover. Comment down below. Let me know. What are your thoughts on each of the movie news that me and the guys have discussed here in this video? And if you guys want to see more movie news videos, let me know in the comments down below as well so I could get the habit of making more of these movie news videos if you guys like what you see here. I'm going to leave a link to both of these guys' channels in the description down below. WWE fan, he reviews movies, he does top tens, he does um, game reviews from time to time, he does all kinds of stuff on his channel, check it out. And then Adam Haskell does unboxings on his channel, great channel. So I'll leave a link to both channels in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude, here with... WWE 0599 Reading Rainbow. And Adam... Haskell, New Razor, Adam Haskell, whatever the fuck you want to call me. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget that the three of us will always have Tiger Power! Tiger Power! Believe that. <laughs>